Hey, what's good, fam? Welcome to another episode of the Feed Me, Feel Me podcast. As you can see, it is just Jeff and I. What up? Uh, big news. My book, The Inner Circle, uh, Focus and Fulfillment Habits of the Enlightened, drops in two weeks. Nice. What's the actual date that it drops? Uh, it'll be March 1st. March 1st. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I am super pumped. Uh, this is the, the, the second book I've written. Uh, the first one, The Manifestation of Affirmation, uh, it's out there on Amazon right now. But it, that was a, an exercise for me. Uh, it's kind of like a challenge to myself mm-hmm. to A, actually write a book, mm-hmm. and B, find out if I enjoyed that process. Mm-hmm. And as a result of uh, writing The Manifestation of Affirmation, I realized uh, it was brought to the forefront how much I did not know about the publishing process. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so now I'm working with Jill Fagan um, and uh, on the publishing side. Nice. And she's really, really helped me um, get my thoughts on paper. Mm. And she, she handles everything from uh, after the, the manuscript was complete, uh-huh. editing, publishing, all that good stuff. Nice, so, dude. Congrats on that, man. That's a big move, dude. You know, if you, I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And, you know, just like we were just talking about offline, you know, outsourcing skill sets that you don't possess. Right. I don't know dick about publishing a book. Mm-hmm. You know, I did it and I was happy about it. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, I for sure know it could be done better. Right. And that's not, it's not going to be a major career shift for me. Right. You know, so insert Jill, make it beautiful. Right. And she's a fucking rock star. That's so. good. Well, that's like anything in life. Everything's an iterative, iterative process. Yeah. It's not like mm-hmm. the whole saying, like Mark Zuckerberg, done is better than perfect. Oh, yeah. I so mean, as long even, as you're finishing. It's John uh, Keogh. When we interviewed him way back when, uh, you know, he was like, you remember him saying, um, if you're waiting for, per- uh, if you're proud of the first edition, you waited too long. Right, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's the damn truth, man. So, I mean, shit, just look at, you know, our, uh, our, the, the beginning of the show, mm-hmm. you know, compared to where we are now. Right. You know, when we look back on three iPhones and Facebook Live mm-hmm. with misters on the porch at a coffee shop. Right. To the, uh, hit and miss, uh, Skype interviews mm-hmm. that we had to the uh, in-person exclusive on video face, uh, Feed Me, Fuel Me YouTube channel. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this today crushes what we used to be. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But you can't wait till you have to do all that other stuff first to know that this is where you're supposed to be. Right. You know, we so. didn't even know that this was like what it was supposed to be. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it sort of brings us into our topic today, which is one of the chapters in your book, which mm-hmm. is self-identity. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. you think about where we started with the podcast or any business that we have, mm-hmm. and it's like where you were the first day is completely different than where you're sitting today or at this present moment. Right. And we all have a self-identity where we could hold ourselves to this old portrayal of ourselves, mm-hmm. but then you have to sort of shed that skin to become the new person right. and evolve to being what you actually want to be and accepting sure. that yeah. without, yeah. you know, without looking back and saying like being disgusted at yourself and say like, that was just part of the process. Holding it against yourself. Holding it against yourself. You yeah. know, like mm-hmm. I understand where I was at this point. I wasn't as knowledgeable, but mm-hmm. now at this point, like it's an evolution in the process right? and being able to shed that old identity, respecting it, mm-hmm. but it being able to, you know, evolve into this new form and this right. new being sure. and continue and the continual evolution as we grow. Sure. Cause you know, what we believe today mm-hmm. may not essentially believe what we what we say right now may not be what we think about and say the same thing a year from now, two right. years from now. Sure. Right. Yeah. You know, that, that we <clears throat> talked about that a couple of times in the, the journey of some of our guests, particularly the, the cats that, um, achieved a high level of success in mm-hmm. sports and business. Right. Or, um, the, the one that most re- readily comes to mind are the, the guests that served in the military. Mm. And so much of the uh, uh, stunted growth uh, in the uh, the immediate transition away from the uniform, right. where it's like, 
you're hanging on to the way things used to be mm-hmm. when you were up at 5 a.m. doing PT at work by 0730. Right. And you work till the job is done and blah, 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 blah. That deployment mindset where it's just mission, mission, mission. Right. You know, it that may not be the construct of your life after, mm-hmm. you know. And if you're hanging on to all that stuff, you can't progress in this ne- in this new phase of life, right? You know, and and on top of that, you know the 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 most important part, and I talk about it in the book, is taking those tools that made you successful in that environment and evolving them and adapting those same traits to make you successful in that next phase. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's <clears throat> you know it's it's a huge part of. Uh, what I talk about in the book in that just like we're looking at that transition away from one phase of life to the next, you know, the getting over yourself and uh, adopting that, not holding your, your past failures Mm -hmm. against yourself so that you can learn those lessons and move, move on. Right. You know, um, that's another part of the self identity thing. Right. You know, you need to, uh, it's, um, imperative that you reframe quote unquote failure as a lesson learned mm-hmm. so that it's not repeated right and you can be you know more positive and productive in, in the hereafter yeah and you know the tough part about that is <clears throat> like you said taking responsibility and accountability mm-hmm. of everything that you own in life essentially yeah because it's sort of it, not sort of. It really resonates with me because I finished that book by David Goggins. Mm. You can't hurt me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually what I'm starting tomorrow. Nice, very good yeah. book. You okay. And the reason why I love it because it's it almost mirrors exactly how my dad brought us up, mm. my family, myself. Okay. And it's it's like hardcore in your face, like no bullshit mm-hmm. accountability. Okay. And he's had like his story over here. He's had a fucked up life. Oh yeah. You know, not yeah. everybody's lived that mm-hmm. that road that he's walked, right? Right. But. A lot of the principles he's talking about is like looking at yourself in the mirror, what he calls your accountability mirror. Okay. You look at yourself, you say, if you're overweight, you're, he's like, just say, quit, don't be nice to yourself. Say, I'm fucking fat. If mm-hmm. you're not smart enough or like you don't know a topic, say, I'm stupid. Mm-hmm. And put it on post-it notes. Okay, if I want to lose X amount of weight, here's the top of the thing. Right. And start breaking it down little by little. He's like, but you'll never completely get ownership of that identity mm-hmm. unless you start being real with yourself first. Sure. And that's the that's the most difficult part is it because mm-hmm. a lot of people, they cushion the blow. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're not fat. You're you're uh, pleasantly plump. You're this and this. Yeah, He's like, yeah. just get real with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the part you talk about, like with the self identity portion is like, because I look at like uh, I get an example when I was younger. Mm-hmm. We talked about it with a little bit of Chris Powell, like yeah. he's talking about his kids growing up where. Some like to work hard and the others want instant gratification. Mm-hmm. I was the instant gratification guy, right? Okay. So I watched what my brothers did. Elite athletes mm-hmm. went to, you know, all state level championship things, achieved great feats in their life. Yeah. I would see them and it's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to do that because I'm their blood. And yeah. this, but I, I saw the work that they had to put in, right? Sure. But I didn't do the hard work. I was just sitting there being lazy okay. about it. Yeah. So I essentially look at myself, my accountability mirror, my accountability mirror and say like, I squandered a lot of the talent I had younger because I was lazy. Mm-hmm. It's not that I beat myself up about it, but I get right. real and say like, okay, from this point, when did I start getting authentic with myself? Yeah. I was what at that time? 260 pounds in college. One day I woke up, looked in the mirror, said, Jeff, you got bitch tits, dude. Mm-hmm. From that day forward, I did, I did that P9AX program, yeah. lost 60 pounds, got to 185, boom. But that was the first level of being authentic and transparent with myself. Mm-hmm. That took me 19 years to get to. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But the other years of just lying to myself, like, no, you look good. You're just a big bone guy. Yeah, You're yeah, this yeah. and this and this. Dude, I can't imagine you at 260. It was wild, dude. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to post a picture, dude. Yeah. But I think when... The, when biggest, that, the biggest I've ever seen you is that yeah. afro. Oh, yeah? That, that was like, <laughs> that's in high school, like 220, 225. Okay. Yeah. And then that 260 is complete. It was after knee surgery and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it was that moment where at the time I was looking at that knee surgery or mm-hmm. that blowing out my knee was like, yeah. oh, this sucks because, ex-, but that was the only, honestly the best <clears> thing that ever happened to me. Sure. Because it made me look in the mirror mm-hmm. and understand like, dude, you've taken all your talents, you've squandered them, you've been fucking lazy. Now yeah. I had to actually put in the hard work yeah. behind that and actually achieve real results, right? Sure. 
Yeah. But if I, if I would have continued to hold that identity of being like, you're the lazy dude, you're not worth a piece, you're not worth shit, da 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 da, mm-hmm. I would, who knows where I'd be today, right? right? Just, hold, just beating yourself just up. Just beating yourself up, but yeah. I acknowledge it. <laughs> I acknowledge where I was mentally, physically sure. there mm-hmm. and say, okay, that was a great learning experience like yep. you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And then now we start building that callus yep. of growing to the person we want to be. Become but resilient. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's those things that happen in life, but it's like when you mentioned, you take that full accountability, mm-hmm. that full responsibility yeah. of your own actions, thoughts, and mm-hmm. ideas and your surroundings yeah. is when you can actually have the control that you oh, want in your life. Yeah, you know, man. you know, and I, I talk about in the book, uh, I use the example uh, multiple times throughout the book, the lessons learned from uh, getting kicked out of the Air Force Academy. Right. And uh, how it would have been so easy at 20 years old, and now I'm 35. Right. Going to be 35. Holy shit. Uh, so, you know, to hold myself hold that against myself mm-hmm. for 15 years right. as opposed to learning the lesson of integrity and now I'm uncompromising on it, mm-hmm. you know, whereas before, uh, like the, the, the thing that I cannot stand on the planet earth is a liar. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I did that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so there is so many lessons learned not only about integrity for me, but who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? And as I, I sit here about to be 35, I cannot be uh, an example uh, using the vehicle of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I can't be the example of uh, for the members of CrossFit PHX. I can't mm-hmm. be the example for my kids and my wife if I'm still kicking myself in the ass about something that happened 15 years ago. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. However, because of that experience, I'm now able to apply those lessons Mm -hmm. in the here and now. Right. So something that an experience like that, that holds a lot of people back can also be used as a vehicle to really propel you forward. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the the mental shift that I want for people, mm-hmm. you know, how many people have, you know, and, and we know plenty of them mm-hmm. who have, like you were saying, have like incredible weight loss stories, right, right, but still look in the mirror uh, after all that obvious physical aesthetic progress, mm-hmm. and they they still see themselves as fat, right, and you know, not even that, you know, we'll, we can take a step back, and how many people have walk that path, gone, gone through that journey and still see themselves as undeserving or, or less than, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's a, that's a very real thing, mm-hmm. you know, where you've accomplished so much in from the outside looking in would be a positive, mm-hmm. but you're still hanging on to a negative self image that no longer applies in the here and now. Right. Yeah, you know, that's true. So that's the kind of stuff that, it, you know, I, I discuss in the book. Nice. I love that, man. Yeah. It's, it is, it's great because, you know, self-discovery is always happening. And as I start, you know, peeling back layers more and more, reading more books mm-hmm. and asking myself those questions when you're by yourself and like, what is it do I, that I want in this world? Yeah. What is the person that I want to become? Who do I want to surround myself with? Mm-hmm. And you start getting real with yourself about who you truly want to be, mm-hmm. you start uncovering stories that aren't, or also I can't say you, I started uncovering stories that I'm holding somebody else's story from a book that I read. Like, mm. say I'll read a David Goggins, yeah. David, David Goggins book or something, yeah. just any book, and I'll hear their story that they do. Mm-hmm. And then I'll attach myself somehow through that reading and say, okay. damn, that's a that's a fucking badass story. Mm-hmm. That's me. Uh huh. And it's not me. Sure. That's a story. It's an example mm-hmm. that's supposed to help myself relate to yeah. a circumstance that happened. Mm-hmm. But that exact example mm-hmm. isn't my example, sure. right? Right. So I've had to do a lot of deconstruction and work to look at like, what stories am I holding on to that aren't necessarily mine? Uh-huh. Maybe it was something given to me by my parents, my brothers, right. my sisters, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and outside, whatever it may be. Right. And then once I reveal what that is, I say I can finally say, Ah, no wonder yeah. that I act 
or do mm-hmm. or do the cert- do things in a certain way right because i was trying to follow a path that wasn't necessarily mine mm-hmm. now that i understand that yeah what is the path that i want to follow sure and so like letting go of those identities to where mm-hmm. it's like i have to be the smartest motherfucker in the room mm-hmm. that may have served me at one point right but does it serve me anymore sure. it may not yeah you know because we talk about a lot of, we talked a lot last year about masculine feminine energies mm-hmm. And the masculine is more just like, you know, just punch through fucking holes and just mm-hmm. like grind. That served me at one point. Right. How can I tap into the feminine energy to where you're more loving, yeah. more affectionate towards people where you can say, oh, I love you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Right. Receive compliments. Sure. That's a very tough thing for me to do. Yeah. And I was like, I need to start tapping into that because mm-hmm. there's strength and power in having that feminine energy. 100%. But holding the identity of just like. I'm the motherfucker who can stay up 24 hours, 48 hours, mm-hmm. and get shit done. Can right. you fucking do it? Right. And, like, I held that as, like, a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Just, like, this motherfucker here, like, he goes to sleep when I'm fucking grinding. Like, yeah. this yeah. cat's a pussy. Like, mm-hmm. that's a, that, like, this is how my mind thought mm-hmm. since I was, fuck, dude, mm-hmm. a teenager. Yeah. And I've, I've even saw, I've just, I continue to hold on to the idea. Mm-hmm. But instead of just looking at somebody and saying, like, okay, they may not be possess the same qualities or traits that I, I do. Mm-hmm doesn't mean it's the greatest quality or trade in the world. Right. How can I start seeing if it's, is this idea truly serving me today and now? Right. And what can I start doing to become Mm -hmm. a better evolved person of Jeff Thornton? So for sure, it's it's wild how that stuff happens. I mean, I I talk about coaching a lot in inner circle Yeah. and uh, you know, some, a lot of the lessons I've learned as a result of coaching and mentorship that Mm -hmm. I've had. And you know, to your point, one of the, the, uh, reoccurring themes in that conversation is you know how you are only got you this far Mm -hmm. and you know so you have to evolve Mm -hmm. you know you either have to accumulate uh more and better tools or you have to let go of you know coming back to self-identity you have to purge so much of the, a lot of that old shit right. that no longer serves you. Like you said, that, you know, grind, 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 Gary V mentality, mm-hmm. you know, I'm working while they're sleeping mm-hmm. mentality serves you up to this point. Mm-hmm. But does it serve you now to get you to where you want to go? Right. Like, is it okay with regards to getting to the next level to not work that hard and give some of that responsibility to someone else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or find somebody who's better at it than you do. Absolutely. Than you are, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, that that's, those are the kind of the, uh, you know, things that, you know, we, we are able to, you know, beat our chest about, mm-hmm. you know, I coach all the classes. Well, guess <laughs> what? You can't make any money cause you can't sign anybody up cause you're out there fucking coaching. Right. Does it make sense to keep coaching all the classes? Mm. Absolutely not. Right. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, like, that's the 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 evolution. Like, mm-hmm. yes, it's cool and it's awesome. Be proud of that. Right. You know what I mean? But at the same time, okay, now now it's probably, you know, for me to take advantage of other opportunities, it's it's no longer my time to keep doing it the way I've been doing it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that, that's, it's a huge awakening and mm-hmm. like in the here and now, sometimes it's a really tough pill to swallow. Right. Cause it's like, cause you, like you, you know, we keep using, hanging on to it. Yeah. You know, you don't realize how tight you're holding on to that shit. Yeah. You know, until somebody forces you to acknowledge what you're missing Mm -hmm. because you don't have a free hand anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, you know, that, that's a lot of, uh, the discussion in inner circle, Mm -hmm. you know, like there's, there's, there's other things, but Mm -hmm. a lot of the, a lot of these themes overlap. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like self identity is so big, man. Uh, because, you cannot become who you want to be acting like who you used to be. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't apply anymore. Right. You know, and when it comes to our evolution in terms of opportunity, Mm -hmm. you know, like we, we wouldn't have the opportunities we have now as a podcast in terms of 
um, sponsorship and you know the the wider net that we cast mm-hmm. if we were still trying to do this shit on iPhones right you know what I'm saying like right. that no longer serves us and our mission right you know yeah and a, you know a big piece of self identity that you have to come to grips too is like you are who you are mm-hmm. and you have to acknowledge that if, sure. if you feel a certain way you act a certain way there's no need to conform to what you Absolutely. feel you feel society is going to accept like yeah if you're you know if you're if you're an aggressive sort of person mm-hmm. some people will be like well since i'm overly aggressive we're let's make this podcast more passive let me say the nicest most right you know cuddly things in the world mm-hmm. But it's a weird thing about energy. People, whether it's, you know, um, whether it's logical or not, yeah. people can sense that that's oh. not your true identity. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you have it's to. It's not authentic. It's not authentic. Mm-hmm. So you have to accept that this is who I am as a person, for better or for worse. Right. Like, these are the traits that, mm-hmm. what make Jeff Thornton, for instance. Mm-hmm. And I just have to fall in love with that piece. Like, this is who I am. And I'm not going to conform to being this identity to make people love me or try to attract these things to me because. If I'm my true authentic self, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna reap the rewards and mm-hmm. success, abundance, everything that it, that I, you know, that I can attract. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I'm just repelling it because yep. it's a false identity, it's this mm-hmm. false character bravado yeah. that we carry. Yeah. So it's an important thing, but you have to find. Mm-hmm. I found it that I've had to find, like, what is it that I love about myself? What yeah. is it that I don't necessarily enjoy, but I want to like maybe work on? You know, mm-hmm. not maybe that I want to work on. Yeah. And then. What are some things that I just want to completely let go of and say, well, yeah. this is not, like we mentioned, this isn't going to serve me. This yeah. isn't exactly who I want to be. So what is it in my life that I do love, yeah. the people I want to surround myself with, the opportunities? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't fit in that value system, right. I just completely forget about it. Sure. Whether it's money, whether it's business, mm-hmm. whether it's friends, if it doesn't fit in this value system that I make mm-hmm. for myself, right. I don't even worry about it. And it back mm-hmm. in the day, it used to hold on to me like, well, this person doesn't like me. What can I do to make this person like me? Right. What can I do to make this job want me? It's like, I don't even want the fucking job. Yeah. Why do I care if they want me? Because mm-hmm. I don't even want them. Why right. does this person not want me? Why do I want them? Mm-hmm. And so peeling back those layers and saying, yeah. you know, just because not everybody's going to like you, not every job or whatever's going to mm-hmm. want you, I'm fine with that. Yep. Because here's the value system that I put in place. Correct. And the yes. rest, anything else outside of this, <clears throat> is off the table mm-hmm. it never has to cross my mind again yep. and take up any mental space sure and that's just been like a mm-hmm. a huge you know clarity piece for me dude i think that's awesome you know that's that's the way i run my business right you know like i don't want everybody at right. crossfit phx right you know the people that subscribe and embrace our culture mm-hmm. will stay mm-hmm. the ones who don't won't right but the product is so good, right? Mm-hmm. The culture is so good that the people that there's more people that want to be there mm-hmm. than there are people that aren't. Right. That want that leave. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, you know the one of the things I talked about talked about in the book is paying attention to the signs. Mm-hmm. You know, like in the context of business. You know, one of the things is, you know, are are you making more money? Are you attracting more people? Mm-hmm. Or are you losing members by the dozens? Right. You know what I'm saying? There are some very obvious signs about, you know, how you're living, how you're doing business, mm-hmm. what you're attracting or, or pushing away. Right. You know, that uh, will tell you whether you're living in the right. Are you living your truth or are you living a lie? Mm-hmm. You know, there are very there are some very obvious signs that mm-hmm. are indicators as to which is which. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like to your point, <clears throat> if you're living in your truth or what you believe to be your truth, and all the signs validate that truth, mm-hmm. then you're good to go. Right. You know? But if you're telling yourself that you're indeed living your truth, but everything around you is indicates the opposite. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to have, for, to have a real conversation, maybe even possibly an intervention. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like you now you're delusional, right? You know what I'm saying? So uh, you know I couldn't agree with you more with regards to not conforming. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Being who you are, embracing those things, but at the same time having the awareness to 
acknowledge the pieces of you that can improve that can improve absolutely you know what i'm saying yeah that's a huge because piece. we we're all regardless of how abundant we like to think that we are right you know there's always things that we can improve right but they're not necessarily the, the things that come to mind most readily you know like um not having enough money or mm-hmm. not looking handsome or beautiful enough or what you know those things those superficial mm-hmm. things um, that that surface level stuff that's not necessarily where the work needs to be done right you know what I'm saying right that that's very um, you know that if that's the priority that's very um, that's a that's a sign of lack of awareness right versus if you you know go a handful of layers deeper and work on that shit that right. really uncomfortable stuff right the stuff that you're that you're worried about at a superficial level kind of takes care of itself absolutely you know what i mean yeah yeah it's it's totally different like yeah, yeah i think that uh one of the uh examples that really uh comes out strikes me is um when somebody loses an x amount of weight mm-hmm. or body com- and their body composition changes in a positive direction mm-hmm. and they start to carry themselves different right right the energy that they put off into the universe is what attracts them the things that they want absolutely it's not necessarily the fact that the the a to z change mm-hmm. in and of itself it's the the energy that you're putting out into the universe now that is attracting you the things that you really want. Right. And you know, it on a surface on the surface, it's like, Oh, I look better. Therefore I'm getting the things that I want. Right. But the truth is you're different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you're more confident. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You carry yourself differently. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that you look different. Right. Your energy is different. Yeah, your entire being's changed. Yeah, and those are the kind of things that I really dive into in yeah. Inner Circle. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I love that. You know, and you know, fitness is one of the greatest things that reveal mm-hmm. what you're talking about because, for whatever reason, a lot of people start with this uh, this shallow identity of like, I want to get a six pack, I want to get guns, I want to, you know, big upper body, whatever, mm-hmm. big chest. Yeah, and it always starts because. They want to please the other person. Yeah, Jason talks about. Yeah. It. Jason Phillips talked yeah. about that. You're he, trying. I got into fitness because I, I thought chicks would want me because right. if I had a six pack. Absolutely, <laughs> and then along your journey, when you start seeing those changes in your mirror, mm-hmm. you the identity changes to where you're looking at yourself like, how can I sculpt this piece of clay to be the best art that I can make for myself? Mm-hmm. Not for this person sitting next to me in the weight room. It starts becoming an inflection point where you start looking at yourself more. Mm-hmm. I found that it's you know on my journey it was like. Yeah, I want to have abs because the reasons, like you mentioned, like Jason Phillips. Mm-hmm. But then at like that one to two month mark, when I started seeing the changes in myself, mm-hmm. then all the attention went within like, how can I make Jeff the best person I can make? Right. And you don't worry about the outside distractions because you're not doing anything in this world for anybody else. Right. You have to be doing it for yourself first. Mm-hmm. And that's the part where like self identity has to start taking place. Where right. The judgment of whatever is coming towards your way, like mm-hmm. if I'm sitting here judging that next person. Am I truly looking at myself? Right. The same thing, the finger pointing back, three pointing right. back at mm-hmm. Is that stuff? Am I projecting? Am I projecting like yeah. this person may be going through whatever they're going through. Mm-hmm. So for me to make a judgment based off of the face they're making or what I perceive them to be a judgment that they're making of me yeah. is completely false. Mm-hmm. Because my judgment is just as bad as the judgment I think they're making of myself. Totally. Right? Yeah. And so when, that, when those uh, events happen where I say like, man, this person's mm-hmm. mad dogging me for whatever reason. Yeah. My younger self would have been like, all right, what's up then, you know? <laughs> like, 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 what's up, you know? Right. But now I look at it and I say, mm-hmm. hell, Jeff, what's this saying about myself? Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. is this judgment, what am I thinking of myself yeah. in this moment? It's not what this outside influence mm-hmm. is thinking of me. What am I thinking of myself in this moment? Am I insecure? Yeah. Am, is something going through my head? What is the deeper issue? Right. And it always falls back into my lap now. Dude, and I'll tell you one of the, the greatest exercises in ownership that I've incorporated in, in my toolbox uh, came from Ken Kilday. Mm. Um, he uh, has been my coach for the last four months right. in organ- organizational leadership and development. Mm-hmm. And 
he's like, when you start, um, uh, when you enter into that projective dialogue, yeah. take a breath, take a step back, and whatever, say what you're going to say, but lead with the story I'm telling myself right. is, and that now you own it. Right. It's not me attacking you. Mm -hmm. It's the acknowledgement of this is this is mine. Right. Right. And now we're able to move forward and be productive about whatever that conflict actually is. Right. You know what I mean? And it just makes both of us more receptive to the other's point of view. Right. Now it's been it's been so huge. I use it with my wife, I use mm -hmm. it with my members, I use it with my coaches. I use it, I use it everywhere. Right. And man, it has made uh, you know, things that would have you know uh, been an immediate point of conflict and static mm -hmm. go over so much smoother. Right. Because now it's you don't feel attacked. Mm -hmm. You understand that regardless of how this conversation is going to go, you can say, that's my shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've, I've owned it as my own. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not leaving the conversation like, oh, fuck Jeff. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, it's, it's mine. And now if you don't see it the way that I see it, mm -hmm. I've consciously acknowledged that this is my point of view, my, right. per, my perspective. Yeah. And it's interesting because I heard, um, are you familiar with Marie Forleo? Mm-mm. -mm. She runs this, she runs a great YouTube, but she has okay. this thing called B-School where she helps, she's a female entrepreneur, okay. eight-figure entrepreneur, helps women or helps individuals build the business from the ground up. Okay. Very ins inspirational and influential speaker. Sure. But she said one of the great things, and I thought it was, she was like, everybody's doing the best they can with what they have every single day. Mm -hmm. So you just have to look at, like you, like you were just talking about. I didn't about. know she said that. I've heard that before. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And she said, she was just talking about like, if you make a decision based, mm -hmm. say you and I are having a uh, conversation about the podcast mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. If I make a, a decision and say, well, you, there's a fucking asshole on this one. Mm -hmm. You're doing the best you can with the information, the emotional intelligence you have for that day, for that moment. Mm -hmm. You're doing the best you have. Right. So for me to create a story about what this means between you and I and this, yeah. this certain conversation, right. like you mentioned, I have to say, this is my perception of what Durs is doing. Mm -hmm. It's not right because this is the story I'm creating. Like, he's mad. We're not friends. We're this. And it's yeah, like, yeah. no, that's, com mm -hmm. that's completely false. Sure. You just take it for what it is. You understand each other's point of view at that mm -hmm. point, And you just leave, like you said, at a, a friendly standpoint. Mm -hmm. But it's not like, I hate him. He hates me. Yeah. It's done. You're right? right. You're not making shit up. You're not that, making stuff up. Not really there. And a lot of times <clears throat> you have to have that type of relationship to get mm -hmm. to that point because yeah. As two men like ourselves, ego can get in the way, mm -hmm. coming from the backgrounds we came from. Yep. And it's like, we've had to get to a point where we understand each other's mindset, where mm -hmm. it's like, Durs is making this decision because he's doing it for himself. He's trying to make be the person he's evolved to be. Mm -hmm. I'm making my decisions based off of the person I'm trying to be. Mm -hmm. It's not because one of us hate one another right. or have a type of ill will mm -hmm. towards one another. Right. It's because we're trying to evolve to where we want to be. Right. We may be standing on the same platform together mm -hmm. and we're right we're helping each other rise to the top mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean our goals are entirely the same right but we support each other at that same point exactly and that's a point where i feel like you want those type of people in your circle because mm -hmm. it's an understanding right not a judgment not mm -hmm. a not a false story exactly. it's an understanding of where right. each other are at the same point mm -hmm. so that's one of the things i've started to see is like you get more of like as i start getting more involved and start learning more about people mm -hmm. of like how interactions or relationships happen and not making my own judgment like oh he said this she said this f him right it's just like okay i have to understand where they are in their life right now something could have mm -hmm. completely happened that yeah. i don't even know about right where's the trigger right mm -hmm. but i just have to you know just be kind enough to say like i wish them the best on their path yeah and i just i'm not going to accept my judgment of that at that mm -hmm. point right. i'm just going to reflect and say you know they may have had something traumatic going on in their life mm -hmm. that i don't know about right. so wish them the best and mm -hmm. wish the you know Hope that everything comes, and then yeah. the next time we come together, mm -hmm. the conversation's gonna be completely different, you know? Dude, I mean, go back to uh, Bo Ash's podcast and him and I's relationship, mm -hmm. how it ended, you know, kind of abruptly. Right. And then he went through his evolutionary process as I was going through mine. Mm -hmm. We came back together, and now the relationship is amazing. Right. You know what I mean? And we have 
the same kind of mutual respect that you and I have, mm -hmm. you know, but to your point, you just have to let people go through their process yeah. and not judge them for going through it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I talk about that in the book, you know, when we almost fucking kink this shit. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, that, that's a really long chapter yeah. about how, you know, uh, like you said, I was doing the best I could with what I had mm -hmm. and, um, not being able to verbalize where I was at in my process mm -hmm. created this massive wall between us. Right. But because of the mutual respect, we were able to have a productive conversation, mm -hmm. resolve it, and keep this thing moving forward. Yeah. And now we're here now. Yeah. That's an interesting you know story. Saying? I don't oh, think we've talked about that in depth. Oh, man. That, <laughs> <for the> we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, do it, we'll do it on another show. Yeah, we I, have you to. Know, it's, a, um, it, it's a huge part of our story. Right. You know? Um, I think that without the the context of um, the the psychology of conversation, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like eh. Yeah. But when you dive into it, it's like oh shit, man! Like that's it was it was a really big deal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, but you'll have to read the book. Yeah. To figure that out. And then when's it drop again, bro? Uh, March 1st. March 1st. Yeah, so two weeks. Where can they find it? Dude? It'll be on Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, we'll have all the, um, we'll backlink um, everything once it's out for purchase and everything. Nice, dude. But yeah, man, the, it's called Inner Circle, Focus and Fulfillment Habits of the Enlightened. Um, and it's it's all those conversations about the, the universe, manifestation, self-identity, getting out of your own way. Uh, you know, your struggle is your story, yeah. you know, and like the reoccurring themes that we've addressed on the show just condensed into 11 chapters. Nice, dude. I'm excited to read it. Well, yeah, I appreciate it, man. We'll link everything up on the book cover and everything mm -hmm. on these oh, show notes the, for this the, episode. The black cover one. Oh, but, the black cover yeah, one? Okay, yeah, nice. Dude. Yeah. I like that one the best anyways. Oh, that's, that's what's up. So um, we'll link all that up and then, um, is it up pre-order as well? Uh, Do a pre-order? Yeah, so um, I'm in the final round of edits. That okay. should that should that should drop. That should come through today. Okay. Once that's finalized, it'll be ready for pre-order. Nice, dude. So we'll have all that stuff in the show notes. Cool. We'll have it linked up. Congrats yeah. on that, dude. I appreciate Shit, it, man. man. Yeah, man. That's awesome. I'm dude. looking forward to it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a uh, a passion project of mine, and uh, I'm looking forward to all the feedback that mm -hmm. comes of it. And I can't wait to hear, um, you know, everybody's. Um, feedback and revelations you know what i'm saying yeah i think what i'm really interested in uh i read it out loud on the way up to tell your ride this past week yeah and uh, my wife is five years older than me yeah and uh, we had our nanny who just turned 21 this year yeah and uh, as i'm reading it out loud they both you know in these two very different phases of life yeah. had still had aha moments mm -hmm. based on like the the principles and the stories that i share in the book nice. so um if i can have that kind of impact on those two people i'm really interested to see what kind of impact it has once it gets out there into the universe nice dude so that's what's up dude there you I'm go pumped. i'm pumped man it's it's uh i'm a little nervous at the same time <laughs> if, I, if i'm being completely honest because yeah. like this one will blow manifestation of affirmation mm -hmm. out of the water right so really pumped to get it out there that's me fun dude buy the book <laughs> hey, there's our there's our call to action ken would be pissed at me yeah. for us having this entire discussion and then like so are you gonna tell them to go get it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this is part of the evolutionary process yeah but yeah um it'll be out on it'll be released on amazon in two weeks um, you know, for everybody out there in the Feed Me, Fuel Me tribe, I really appreciate your support and we appreciate you in enjoying our journey mm -hmm. uh, through this podcasting process. So until next time, guys, Feed Me, Fuel Me.